We got a Hobeo Hyper ST. Welcome back to Corporate Nitro. Corporate Nitro. Oh, hi there. I uh, just noticed that you're praying. Do you mind if I ask what you're praying for? Are you praying for another successful vintage Nitro restoration? We got a Hobeo Hyper ST Truggy with the LRP ZR30 engine. Corporate Nitro and we are back with one of the best truggies in the world, the famous Hyper ST. This has got a reputation for being an absolute tank. They really are bulletproof. This is the standard version. This is not the Pro. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I've already got a Pro in brand new condition. I did the break-in. I did a full strip, every single nut and bolt, and then put it back together. Reason I did that? was because the chassis was just caked in oil and dead insects from sitting in someone's garage and I wasn't happy with uh, the condition and I really wanted to know what it would be like to build it from kit so I decided just to take it apart and um, it was a great experience great to get your, your teeth into a Hobeo Truggy so now we've got a standard version and uh, a friend has rung me up and said can we put this back together for him using what's been included and let him know what he's missing so we can work out what it's going to cost to get this running again. Is it going to cost too much? If it's just a little bit of money, we're going to buy the parts. If it's a lot, we're probably just going to sell it. So uh, what's in it for me? Why do I do this? Well, I'm passionate about Nitro and especially Hobeo. And uh, he's looking after me. He's giving me a few fluids here, some Loctite, some uh, lossy shock oil and some hardy air filter oil and also some differential oil we've got like a 6 and a 10 and a 50k as well so we've got a chassis but not much there so are we missing an engine yes we are we've got an lrp zr30 which is a got a reputation for being a powerhouse we can see uh the venturi and that's like a restrictor i've never seen one of these before actually so we'll have some fun cleaning this up i think the flywheel is a little bit a little bit loose might have to tighten the flywheel but the clutch feels good and uh what's all this tape on here is it is, is the case cracked or is he just trying to keep uh air out of the back to keep it clean i mean that doesn't really make sense because the venturi is exposed and i can see uh, bits of air filter just sitting there so we'll have to put a clean that up speaking of the air filter that's what's left of it it's just uh air filter cake so we're gonna have to clean that up uh and definitely get a new one actually i think i've got one of these spare so we, we do have the servos we've got two radio trays which is good because i can see that it's not here um the fuel tank is a triangle shape i know that goes there uh we've got the pipe and the header to match the engine that's good we've got the uh, radio box and we've got the battery cover for an external um, stick pack if we're using a stick pack but um, this one's using a hump pack so we wouldn't be able to use the cover we would have to just probably zip tie this next to the battery box if we're going to use the hump pack so what's missing uh, we've got a, a brake linkage or a throttle linkage there but only one uh, we've got steering linkage so the only real thing that's missing we need another one of these otherwise we're not going to be able to hold the steering servo down uh, the second one of these is a little bit different shape um, from memory it goes it's got a top piece as well it sits underneath the aluminium uh, and that stops the the servo going all in different directions so it's mostly complete it's even got the air filter hanger there as well uh, all the brakes are there we just need these rods uh, going to the throttle servo that's all because uh, i can only see one linkage here uh, we've got the linkage for the uh, carburetor the throttle rod but uh yeah with only one linkage there i'll have to go through my spares to see if we can find another one from the hyper 7 spares and uh, see if we can make that work but other than that from memory i don't think there's anything else missing at all 
it all seems to be there the front clip looks fantastic now something interesting about the front is the tower is aluminium very thick aluminium is that standard on the hyper st or is that a piece from the pro i've got a feeling that's a piece from the pro because on the back we can see it's all plastic definitely it's plastic and then if we look in the box look at that we've got a, a rear shock tower from the pro okay so it looks like this was never fitted but it was kept as a spare ready to go did he smash the front end and break the plastic and upgrade it to aluminium or did he just put aluminium just to be safe so maybe we'll put the the, the pro piece on with a thicker aluminium what's interesting about these is that the first version of the hyper st pro came with eight millimeter thick aluminium shock towers the second version of the hyper st pro they reduced it to six millimeter shock towers but the standard version of the hyper st always had plastic shock towers so in my opinion that is an upgrade and the uh the original is has probably been smashed to pieces which is why it's not in the box if you want to make a little custom plate for your hyper st and uh for your electric you don't need throttle servo here so you can either cut it off there but why cut it off just make another one so that you can return the car to nitro and sell it again one day if you want to your standard version shock towers has got the body mounts integrated into the shock tower now if we upgrade to the pro version shock tower six millimeter aluminium then what we need to do is buy six eight two one four body post otherwise you've got nowhere to mount the body all right so we went through the screws that came in the box and then we also had to go through some of my ones and then we found enough nuts and enough washers to get the engine mount screws on both sides that's a good start for the day now being a race engine with no pull start just a uh, sealed back plate we need to use a bump box so we need to rotate the flywheel to start it and since the flywheel is all loose which means we can spin it and nothing happens that's no good so how are we going to get the flywheel back onto the collet it seems like there's a lot of dirt there it's probably not gripping very good so we can either push it down like that and hope that it grips see that works when you push it down i get a bit of grip and i can see the the piston going up and down but is it going to stay on there so normally you tighten up the clutch nut harder to get a really good grip but i can't get to the clutch nut so i might have to take this apart and have a good look at it all right first thing that i notice is a four shoe clutch which i've never seen before i wouldn't even know how to get it off um there you go there's no clutch nut on there that's why it's loose so we need to put a clutch nut on there and get that clamped on i've only got two clutch nuts uh, available in my collection so i think we'll go with the more round one actually we're going to have to go for the skinny one because if i use the fat one then my tool is too fat to even get inside the hole here so <laughs> sort that out now i didn't really have much luck with the clutch nut so i grabbed the fat one and put it on backwards and there's just enough meat hanging out for me to grab it with the uh the fat end of the driver so uh wrench so we've put some loctite we've left a little bit of play there just so see that lateral play so it doesn't grab anyway it's time to put the engine mounts on the engine uh, otherwise it'll be impossible to get it on the car so what we'll do is we'll remove the mounts from the car put them on the engine and then bring it all back and do it up and reset the mesh are you washing the air filter yeah. oh is it fun yeah. is it very dirty Are you washing the pipe? Yeah. Oh, thanks. So, just out of curiosity, we'll charge the NIMH battery, 1400 milliamp. We'll charge it at 1.4 amp. Uh, I'm charging it a bit higher than the recommendation, just so it doesn't give a false 
uh, delta peak early, too early, and uh, we'll just see how many milliamps goes in there. I'll assume it's flat. All right, it charged in two minutes and 50 seconds, and it put in 56 milliamp. I'd say either the battery was already charged, or this battery is actually dead. So now that we've cleaned the uh, air filter, we need to find a new sponge for it. Well, lucky for me, I've got a spare sponge because these come in a, a two-pack. You always get two of these and two of these, which I needed for my Hyper ST Pro. So now that I've got one spare, let's give it to my friend. He needs it more than me. To install the engine, you can try and put the lock nuts on the inside of the mounts and get the engine on, but that's going to take about an hour. So let's light the candle, heat up the screws from underneath, get our hex tool with our tent peg uh, for more leverage ready to go and get these screws off. We have to get on our knees, pray to the nitro gods that we don't strip any screws. Say a little prayer for hyperist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to know what's funny? Uh -huh. Two of the screws are using a 3 mil driver and two are using a 2.5. The four screws are not the same. The uh, carburetor is pretty dirty, so uh, just give it a flush with water and then take it apart, oil it up with some after run oil and put it all back together. So we're playing around with uh, testing the electronics with a uh, Ace RC, which comes from a Thunder Tiger. Great radios. And um, what we found is that the steering servo which is uh, 13 kilos JR, works fine. And the Savox Servo, 16 kilos for throttle. Don't know why the throttle's got more torque than the steering, but anyway, it's, uh, it's dead. So let's take the screws out and see if we can see any obvious reasons why it's dead. Is the digital motor seized or is something else going on? Yeah, the, uh, the board is burnt up. If you look closely, if you look at that big black MOSFET, there you can see it's burnt up and this is a healthy savox servo look at the difference nothing burnt up everything looks normal i'm going to put the truggy upside down so we can mount the radio tray it's already in there you can see it there so now we're going to put the eight screws in there with the ozito cordless driver okay so that's a wrap for the hyper st the uh, uh, wheel nuts are wrong, so we're not going to do those up. These are all loose. Uh, we don't have the correct uh, bump starter for a truggy, so I can't start it up anyway. Um, the steering servo is good, which just needs to be reconnected, but uh, this tray is all loose because it needs to be removed because the throttle servo is dead and needs to be replaced. Uh, the linkages need to be ordered for the brakes and the missing piece to hold the servo in and the radio tray down needs to be ordered. So without that, there's no point in doing all this up. And a few other things as well. It needs a battery, it needs a, a radio, and um, got the air filter ready to go on there. So it's almost finished, but uh, still very far away from running. Uh, the Hyper ST is a great truggy. This is the first time I've seen the standard version. So that's an upgrade, being metal. That's an upgrade, being alu as well. And uh, that's the standard shock tower, of course. All right, so let's pack this up and uh, take it back to our friend. Do you want to be in the frat? Yeah, yeah, please. Electric blizzard? Nitro blizzard. 